Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar series, Parenting Tips, Counselors Webinar Series. Today, we are going to talk about 10 life lessons learned during the pandemic. So we have divided this webinar in two. So today, I'm going to talk about the first five. And next week, Ms. Batista is going to speak about the other five. Okay, so after 11 months of pandemic in Panama, these are our life lessons. We have had enough time to reflect a little bit and think what are the changes that we have experienced during this pandemic? What are the things that we um, value now more than before? And what are these things that will be valuable throughout the rest of our lives? The first one is routine is anchoring. So I'm going to read um, the sentences we wrote on the article posted on the Med Weekly and then go deeper into each one of them. So routines matter, sleep matters, personal space matters, checking in on others matter, make the most of every day, get rid of the excess and try to reduce stress. So all of these things have become really important during the pandemic, how much sleep we get every night, what is our eating routine or habits, how much time do we spend on wellness activities and doing exercise and so on and so forth. So to start the routines or structure gives a sense of consistency. So now we are in a pandemic and the outside world has become very chaotic for children and adults and having this structure gives us a sense of security. It allows children to focus on learning and adults also to focus on learning and working. We need to make sure that we include wellness activities in our routines and after we have established this structure we need to be flexible with our routines. So first we establish it and then we are flexible. The second lesson is to have honest communication. The honest communication is healthy. So emotional dysregulation has worsened during the pandemic. Frustration is turning quickly to anger. Anxiety manifests as rage and fear looks like extreme sadness. We've learned that we need to be open and honest about what is going on with each of us. Okay, so on this point, I would like to talk about assertive communication. Basically, there are three different types of communications, passive communication, assertive communication, and aggressive communication. We need to promote assertiveness to communicate our needs, thoughts, and feelings. When we tend to have a passive communication, we do not share our feelings and needs because we don't want to getting conflict with someone else. We want to avoid conflict. So we just um, take everything in, don't say anything, and stay with this sense of um, discomfort or sadness. On the other side, we have aggressive communication. And when we experience this, um, this kind of communication with others, we only think about our needs and we say them in a way that feels um, like an attack to others. And the middle point is assertive communication, the one in which we are able to express our feelings, our thoughts, our needs in a way that is not felt as an attack by others. So one tool that we can use to practice honest and healthy communication is the I message. So we have this script and we can use it every day until it becomes something natural. So the script goes like this, I feel, and then you insert your feeling. In this way, you are not attacking the other person, like you do this or you, do always, you always do that. Your starting point will be your own feelings. Then you say, when you, and you insert a specific behavior. It's not about the other person being rude or being any, other kind of trade is about something that they did that made you feel that way. Because then you insert a reason. And at the end, you insert an option. Next time, please 
so on and so forth. So one example is, I feel upset when you don't clean the bathroom after you use it, because then when I get into it, it's dirty. Next time, please make sure you leave it as clean as you would like to receive it. That's a simple example but it can be used for any sort of situations. Okay, the third lesson is less is more. So we can live with a lot less stuff, whether it is physical, mental, and emotional, and that is liberating. So in the past months, we have found out that we are not uh, going into places that we used to go, like school, like work, restaurants, parks, we don't travel anymore. There's a lot of things that we thought were super important in our lives and due to the pandemic, now we have discovered that we can actually live without them. So this is very liber liberating and it's related also to gratitude and appreciation. So one important lesson now is to appreciate what and who you already have in your life. How can you practice gratitude and appreciation to others? You can say positive comments, compliments, uh, positive reinforcement through your verbal communication. You can also do it through actions, demonstrate your gratitude and appreciation by doing nice things for others, um, taking care of them, having some details with them, you may also have a gratitude journal, and this is a very useful tool to start your day. You can say, okay, today I am grateful for and write one or two things so that you are more focused on the things that you already have and not about what you're lacking or what you miss. And you may also have a gratitude circle. This is something that you can do as a family or with friends. And it's like at the end of every day or at the end of every week or at the beginning, you can have a circle where you can express what are you grateful for that day or that week. Or you can express gratitude towards another person. I am grateful to you because, and you explain yourself. The fourth lesson is empathy is strength. So many emotions are bubbling beneath the surface and it requires a new level of understanding and empathy. Remembering that we're all struggling in our own ways has helped us cope with the new world. But what is empathy? It is the ability to understand the feelings and situation of other person. It's to try to put yourself in other situation and understand not justify their feelings and actions. Sometimes we tend to judge other people, our family members, our colleagues, our friends, and we don't see beyond their behavior or their communications what could be causing this situation or this conflict with them. So we, I think one important lesson is to stop and think, okay, what is something this person might be going through right now? So then once you have that understanding, you can start a, com a conversation with that person. And the last for today is learning is personal. Watching how different students react to today's circumstances reminds us that learning is personal. Every mind brings its own unique gifts and perspectives. So we have, first of all, with children and adults, we have different learning styles. There are many theories about learning styles, but the three main are visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. There's a lot of people who learn visually by watching images or even reading. Um, others need to listen. So listen to a lesson, listen to the teacher talking, watching videos, or listening to a lecture. And then uh, we have kinesthetic people who need uh, movement, hands-on activities, and there could be also a combination of those three. So we have been challenged by this pandemic to be more aware about our own learning style and accept that we all learn in different ways. Um, 
besides that, there are other factors like interests or skills um, that might influence in the way we learn. We all learn all the time. The difference is that we learn um, from different experiences. We learn differently. We learn at different pace. We have different skills and we might have different interests. So after 11 months of pandemic, I think this is a great opportunity for you to think about what are your life lessons. You can write three, five, 10, and then share that with your family. Actually, this is a very um, nice opportunity to look back almost a year ago when all this started. And now where have we, um, where are we now? What have we achieved even with, the, with this situation? How much have we changed? What are the things that we appreciate now? What are the things that we let go? And so on and so forth. So next week, Ms. Batista is going to share with you the other five lessons more in depth. And she's here. I don't know if she would like to add something to the presentation. Thank you, Ms. Roxana. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what a beautiful topic. Uh, how I love the way you display it and you gave you know, recommendations for each of these lessons. Uh, which all are representative of our, you know, the resilience attitude that some of us have been uh, developing during these 11 months of pandemic. Uh, a re resilience is, is, a, is a psychological skill that all human beings uh, possess, but uh, some, some people, you know, um, have developed it uh, more than others. So all these uh, lessons that you just shared, Ms. Roxana, are ways that, you know, that resilience takes action. So, uh, of course, all the things that we have learned through this pandemic are very personal, are very, you know, unique. But this brings us to the reflection of, I love the, uh, what, when you talk about gratitude, uh, and I like to think of resilience as a, as a, as a balance and which, you know, we have the negative loads and we have the positive loads and, and it's resilient is to try to lighten a little bit, you know, the, the negative load and, and, and put some more positive load on the other side of the, of the balance. So all these lessons help us reflect and, and be grat uh, grateful for what we have and and in other cases, maybe help us open, open our eyes and, and see uh, if this is something we can take advantage of, so. Uh, yes, and actually, you know, like in every um, adverse situation, there is always a lesson. And as you mentioned, it's very personal. Your lessons might be totally different as the ones that we're sharing today and the ones that we, Ms. Batista will share next week but still it's a really nice exercise to do like stop for a moment and really think okay what are the things that i've learned in the last 11 months and actually make a plan okay from what i've learned these are some strategies that i can put in place in the future so that this learning um, becomes part of my daily life not only something like a thought or a reflection that i made but actually part of my routine, my lifestyle, and so on. So thank you very much for joining us today. And next Thursday, we are going to listen to the other five lessons. And also, um, we're going to upload this video on our YouTube channel in case um, you are not able to come or if you want to recommend this video to someone else. So have a nice afternoon and see you next week.